that was good. I, hello, we're starting. <laughs> Sometimes I do it after music, but um, this is a good time. Thank you for reminding me. Go ahead. Uh, no, 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 no. You're all set? Okay. Thank you. So again, this is Psalm 16, and it's um, very, it's prophetic, and it's ultimately about Yeshua, but it, David was the one that wrote it, it came through his mouth. Obviously, it came through Holy Spirit, and mm -hmm. so there is a part where we're gonna we're gonna let it come from our heart, and then the Lord speaks too. So this is um, out of the Passion Translation, and it starts out with David and us. So we're saying, "Keep me safe, Almighty God. I run to you." My, my safe place. I said to Yahweh, you are my maker and my master. Any good thing you find in me has come from you. And then verse three, this is Yahweh speaking. And he said unto me, my holy lovers in the land are my glorious ones who fulfill all my desires. Yet there are those who yield to their weakness and they will have troubles unending. I never gather with such ones, nor give them honor in any way. What a contrast right there. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so I want to look at three and not four. And so we are people who do want to fulfill all of his desires. And he said unto me, my holy lovers in the land are my glorious ones who fulfill all my desires. Let that be your heart today. He's so loving and so tender, and he wants to touch your heart today. So five, this is again, David and us. Yahweh, you alone are my inheritance. You are my prize, my pleasure, and my portion. You hold my destiny and its timing in your hands. Your pleasant path leads me to a to pleasant places. I'm overwhelmed by the privileges that come with following you. Seven, the way you counsel me makes me praise you more for your whispers in the night give me wisdom, showing mm -hmm. what to do next. Because I set you, Yahweh, always close to me, my confidence will never be weakened, for I experience your wraparound presence every moment. Let me go to the next one. Nine, my heart and soul explode with joy, full joy. Even my body will rest confident and secure. For you are, you will not abandon me to the realm of death or decay, nor will you allow your faithful one to experience corruption. And we know that that was Yeshua speaking right there. Because of you, I know the path of life as I taste the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand or your right side, I experience divine pleasures forevermore. Lord, I just ask you to saturate us. Saturate us with your presence. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Your word says in Jeremiah 31, 14, Yahweh said, I will saturate the soul of the priests with fatness. 
and that's abundance. And my people shall be satisfied with my goodness. The saturation is what we want, Lord. Your saturation, your presence means everything. Your presence is so beautiful. Your presence envelops us. You increase your presence. Saturate us. We will praise you and worship you, give you glory and honor and all praise just because of who you are. And your presence brings us to a new level of giving ourselves to you. So I ask you, Lord, to touch every person that's listening to this broadcast. I ask you to saturate them with your presence, saturate them with your glory, soak into their very being. Let them feel you in every area of their spirit, soul, and body. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to read some declarations. And it says, we declare, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and your and by your will they exist blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever you o oh lord are sitting on the throne high and lifted up and the train of your robe fills the temple I ascribe greatness to you, for you are my God, my rock. Your work is perfect, and all your ways are just. You are a God of faithfulness and without injustice. Righteous and upright are you. We love you, Lord. O oh, Lord, my God, our God. With all our hearts, mind, and strength, you are the Lord, and there is no other. There is no other before you. There is no one like you. There is no one that can reach the heights of your heights. You are God. You are the King of glory. There is no one besides you. I glory in your holy name, and my heart rejoices in you. I will seek your face forevermore. I will bless you, O oh Lord. I will bless you. I will bless you all of my life. I will bless you during the day. I will bless you at night. I will bless you in the country. I will bless you in the city. I will bless you wherever you take me. I will bless you in front of many. I will bless you in front of no one. I will bless you. I will give you, I will give you everything. I will give you everything. I bless you, Lord. While I live, I will praise you. I will sing praises to you. While I have my being, I will sing praises to you. I will sing high praises to you. I will praise you with my mouth and a two-edged sword in my hand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, you heavens of heaven, and you water above the heavens. Praise his holy name. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. We love you. We love you and we worship you. I ask you, Lord, saturate. 
saturate, saturate each person. Let them feel you. Let this be a day that they are changed from one degree of glory to the next into the same image as Christ. Touch your people, Lord. I release your presence. I release your presence. I release your glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So beautiful. We bless you. Perfect in all your ways. Perfect. Wonderful. Mighty. All power and glory and honor and praise belong to you. You're high and lifted up. You're high and lifted up in our beings, in all the earth, and all the earth, all of the heavens. You're high and lifted up. We lift you up in our minds. We lift you up in our emotions. Calm the storms, Lord. Let your people increase in faith and know that you are for them. You are for you in them. You love them. Wake us up, Lord, with that kiss. Let him kiss us with the kiss of his mouth. The kisses of his mouth. That tender love that only you can give. Only you satisfy. There's no one that can satisfy us but you. You fill that spot. You fill that place that was put in every man and every woman that only you can fill. We ask you just fill it today, Lord. Fill that spot in us that was meant for you and is for you. And we say, come in and fill us. You're so beautiful. Pam. Yes. You're speaking to him right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, you are. I know I am. <laughs> Let me share with you. So as you were praying, I saw you on the spiral staircase. You were on the top and it kept going up, but you kept praying in your hands. You were like lifting up your hands and praying and like decreeing. And it kept going up and it stopped. And then I saw this gold bright light you were here this bright light was here shining down on you and then you kept praying more and more and i can see your mouth moving but this time i was in front of you looking down and your face disappeared i could hear you praying 
but your face turned into a blinding gold light. I couldn't see your face no more, but you were still praying. You were still talking to him. And he was hearing you. You are, you are in his presence, literally. Like right in front of him. And that this light is a blinding light. It's not silver, it's gold. Brighter than the sun. And your whole face disappeared into this light, it became the light reflection of the light and you are still praying. He's just drawing us all in closer. He made the way for us. He mm -hmm. made the way. He opened the door. The door is open right now. Open the open your heart. Open your heart to your king. Nothing can stand in his presence. Nothing that is not of him can stand in his presence. Everything has to bow. Every tongue will confess. Every knee will bow at his presence because he's glorious. He's glorious. He's perfect, perfect beauty. He's wonderful and he's in majesty. He's our king of glory. And he wants not only to touch us, but he wants us to touch him. He's not untouchable. He wants us to draw closer, closer. Closer. And he says, it's good. Come, come closer, come closer. If you could just see yourself walking towards him and his arms are out and he's coming towards you and you just get closer a point where he's just embracing you and he's loving you and he couldn't love you any more than he loves you right now we see we see his love Our creator, he loves us. We're perfect in his eyes. Perfect. He sees you through the blood, through his sacrifice. Bought you at that price that it cost it was costly to him. But he'd do it again if he had to, but he doesn't have to. It was once and for all. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to play a couple of songs. 
and um, just focus on him, enjoy his presence, and let him speak to you. Let him love on you. Let him hug you. Let him touch you. Don't be afraid to touch him.
I have a word for Mike and a vision. Where is Mike, can you hear me? Can hear you loud. Loud and clear. During that song, Mike, the Lord brought you to my attention, and He wants you to know without a doubt that He has not forgotten. He has not forgotten. And I also saw a fire in you, Mike, in the lower part of your being. I saw this fire start to grow, and this fire will move you. <laughs> this fire will burn uncontrollably, but this fire will move you, Mike. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That was beautiful. I'm sorry I was having trouble stopping uh, <laughs> okay. music. So I want to make sure that, did you hear all of that, Mike? Yeah. I, I, I heard most of it. Can you repeat it again? I'm so sorry. That's okay. He... He brought you to my attention, Mike, during that song. I saw you. And I, I, I heard him say, this is how he talks to me. I have not forgotten you, Mike. And then I saw a fire inside of you, Mike. It was in the lower part of your being. But then this fire... It's like really, it's growing, and this fire is going to move you. This is not meant. This is the fire of the Holy Spirit within you is going to move you. And I feel really awesome. strong to say yes. it is going to move you. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I haven't forgotten you. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love that. You're so good, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's beautiful. I just, I want to worship him just a little bit longer. Um, and there's a song that we lately have liked. And... <laughs> <laughs> this time i want you to be able to hear it so just just continue to saturate in his presence saturate can we just do this just a little bit longer can yeah. we do that? are you in all right so let me go here and this may mean getting up dancing a couple of songs just you know what he just wants us to be free so let go of everything that hinders you from being free anyone watching this zoom you know just be free in your home or wherever you are you know just come out of the box you're spirit beings dance in the spirit you know, there's a song on here. It is, um, I have it on my list and maybe we'll play it. Maybe we won't, but it is dancing like David danced. And, you know, when asked, I asked some people, you know, who they relate to as far as <laughs> the characters go. That seemed like and, forever ago. Yeah, that was forever ago, wasn't it? And yeah. how many- Did you turn your volume down? Me? Yeah. Is it down or is it, can you hear me? I can hear you, but it just sounds like it's dropped a lot. And my phone is turned all the way up. Okay. So maybe you can hear me now. And it could be because um, I have YouTube kind of pulling on it. But, okay. you know, I asked a group of people how, what Bible characters they can relate to. Like, you know, what by Bible character does the is Holy Spirit highlighting 
And do you know that several people said David? So take this opportunity, Davids, any Davids in the room or out of the room, you know, take this opportunity to be free. You know, we have one life, one life. And I'm going to talk more about that later if we get to that today. But (laughs) (laughs) I'm, I'm just saying, you know, who cares? You know, David didn't. How about when when the ark was coming up, right? The ark was coming back to the temple. And he's like, he said, I don't care who sees me. I don't care. You know, was it Bathsheba? You know, his his wife said, oh, you know, please, you're embarrassing me. I'm paraphrasing. And he's like, I don't care if this embarrasses you. I don't care what I don't care what you think or anybody else thinks. Again, I'm paraphrasing. And the reason why I don't is because he, Yahweh, is first. And if I put my embarrassment first, I'm exalting myself above him. You know, why not live this life free? All of that was taken care of already. Embarrassment, shame, everything was taken care of. All right, then we know it was. So walk in it. All you have to do is walk in it. (laughs) All you have to do is walk in it. Do you hear that? You know, sometimes we know these things, but we never apply these things. And that's where the Lord is taking us to a place where you not only know it, but you live it. You not only talk about it, but you live it every day. And so let me see. We will do a hallelujah song. I tell you, I play this song all the time. Um, just because <laughs> it's so beautiful and it, it really is. does exalt the Lord. And it's like, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. That's, That's what I was dancing to before we came on. All right. So you're warmed up. <laughs> I'm out of breath. I'll do it. <laughs> okay. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, da, 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 da. There it is.
this is. And I'll get rid of it. <laughs> Woo, I love it. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I had a whole bunch of songs, you know, just in case that's what the Lord was leading us to do. Over and over and over and over again. Hey, Christine, so good Hi. to see you. We love you. Love you guys. Uh, <laughs> so good to see your face. I haven't seen you in a while. You know, the Lord kept telling me to come on, so here I am. <laughs> Yay. He's good at that. He's good. <laughs> so I will start teaching a little bit. I I will probably I think what this what's gonna happen with this teaching that I have, it's probably going to stretch out into more more times um, it's probably going to be a couple of times maybe three times and and maybe even if holy spirit speaks tomorrow he'll be talking about this too um we know it the holy spirit is the one that will direct you but this is about it, i could it was really hard to come up with a title because it's a number of things it's about restoration. It's about the image of God. It's about the high call. It's yeah. about, <laughs> it's about, him. it's about, him. It, it's about glory. You know, it's, it's a number of things. And last week I spoke about Kairos time, an appointed time. You know, we we were talking about we're, we've entered into a set time, an appointed time by God. You know, soon it, we're going to come into the fullness of that time, but in many ways it's already begun. You know, things are happening that that we don't even know about right now, but His will will be done in all the earth. And so this set time, this Kairos time, the one that I spoke about last week is one that you, when we talked about Esther, we talked about the fact that she made a decision to walk into that time. This Kairos time that we're walking in today is really not necessarily our decision, because it's his time, it's his time that he's bringing to the earth, but there's always a stepping out in faith. And so this morning, I know that I was going to talk about it, but I don't know, I don't remember if I said it at the beginning or not, but I woke up to a voice, his voice, that said, it's time to move on in move on in. It's time to move on in. And I didn't ask what that meant. I was just kind of like, you know, I knew that he said something before that, but I missed it. So I grabbed my phone, I'm typing it in. And I had the exact words on the last part of it. And I knew, I knew that he was talking about there are things that you can walk in right now. You don't have to wait for. And, I, you know, it's time to move in on what is already available. This appointed time is coming, but we can wait and wait and wait for an appointed time when he says the promised land is available for you to take now. So walk in it. So one of the things that I was reminded of when I was thinking about what he said is that the way is open, right? So he said, there's a gate that's open. So Mark gave us a prophetic vision. He shared with us that a prophetic vision that the Lord had given him. So why don't you share that, Mark?
Oh, wait a minute. You have to unmute. Just need to unmute. There you go. Um, he gave me a vision. And I saw this gate. It's, 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 it was um, marble. It looked like marble, if I could describe it. It was big and it was arched at the top. This gate is, is arched and it had like gold uh, etching in it that went all the way around it. I asked him, what is this? And he said, it's the Eastern Gate. So I looked it up and it was the same, uh, the same shape the same rounded arch in the top and everything. And I was blown away. And he said, walk through the gate. So I did. And it's it's open. And it goes up. <laughs> I mean, you go through the gate and you just go up. Because Mount Zion. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. But we also know that the Eastern Gate has to do with the garden as well and the restoration that we're all going to receive I mean there are levels you know you can receive restoration for your family you can receive restoration for your own life you can receive restoration or whatever for your ministry for your finances any of those things but you can also receive the restoration that we should all be desiring. And that is a man, you, you and you, a woman, and me walking in and living in the image of God every day of our life. There are certain things that we can walk in now. There are certain things that we can walk in by faith. You know, for an example, what was, what is, and what is, is, what is to come. So what was is gone and buried for us. I'm not talking about Yahweh right now. I'm talking about our lives. What is, is what is true of us in Christ. What he paid for. And like we were saying during communion or afterwards, that we need to be a people that are willing to apply, not just say it, we need to truly believe it. You know, what he did for us on the cross, we need to just believe. So it takes faith. It takes other things. And I'm asking Lord, I'm asking the Lord, like, how do we move into this that is available for us? Because you made it available for us when you died on the cross, you were buried and you were resurrected. We are in your image. You've made us in your image and likeness in Christ. You are the image of Yahweh. We are the image of Yahweh because we are in you. You made the way, you opened the gate. You said, come in, not only to Zion, the new Jerusalem, the garden is there. It's the kingdom. It's a people restored. It's a people that receive the restoration of what is true of them because of what Jesus did for us. We have to know that there are things that are already done and already true that we haven't stepped into. 
And we can say over and over again that it's true, but you have to believe it. So Lord, help us to believe you. Help us to walk in this new day where the gate to the garden, and Mount Zion, is right there. We have come to Mount Zion. We are there already. Why aren't we living there? And that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a little journey. And we're going to find out how we can do it. And we can do it now as fast as possible. You know, Thomas, he said, uh, I won't believe that Jesus is, has resurrected until I see the nail prints in his hands and the nail prints in his feet. I mean, I'm just not going to believe it. And the Lord said, you know, how, how blessed are people that believe without seeing? I mean, we know that he has said that. And he, he, he just wants you to believe him. He's spirit being. We see in the spirit. You know, you may not have a vision, but I'm telling you, he was here today. And he's here right now. You know, before you started talking about the vision you saw, Mark, I saw him right there. I mean, I didn't see him as clearly as I want to see him. I can tell you that. <laughs> I want to see him face to face. I want that. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to see him. He said so. But the bottom line is, I knew it was there. He was there by the spirit. I know what he smells like. I know what he tastes, he tastes like. It's a taste the Lord, for he is good. So that tells me you can taste him. Yeah. So we just have to realize there are things in the spirit available now. And I don't want to get ahead of myself, but what is to come is, and I, I don't know everything's to come that is to come, but I do know that the glory will be poured out all across the world. We've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. So when the glory is poured out, it's going to be easier to see. It's going to be easier to believe. It's going to be easier to walk in it. But right now, we're in the meantime. And we can either choose to wait or we can choose to move forward. And I can tell you, if you move forward, you're doing the will of the Lord. I'm not telling you to go out and do something he told you not to do. I'm telling you that you can live as a man or a woman in the very image of God with him with you day in and day night, day all, all day, all night, and never leave you. We can live in that experience with him, that reality today. Why would man? So we're so used to focusing on what we can see, what we can hear, what's going on in the world, that that has somehow become the prize. And the prize is the high call that's in Christ Jesus. So I went on kind of a journey to find out like, what is this high call? You know, what it, tell me more about this. And he, he did start opening some things up. I'm not saying I have everything, but I, I know that he's going to keep giving us more as we talk about this. So when you, when we had communion, you talked about 
his body being broken for us. And what came to, to my mind when I was going through and just looking at what he was talking to me about is we had actually talked about this last night, that his image, his face was so marred that he was unrecognizable. The perfect man, the perfect God man was unrecognizable. He was disfigured. And I had this quick vision. It just flashed before me and it just wrecked me of what he quickly, it was like what he looked like. He was all bloodied and his just didn't even look like a person. He took that for us. His image was marred. Think about it. He took that so that the marred image of God that was in our life could be redeemed and that we could receive the restoration of that man, Adam, in the garden, 100% in love with God. You know, Adam, and we're in, I know we're in Christ. So, you know, if you want to say something, I can tell sometimes when Mark is thinking, he's like, let me just. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, we're I in. think you know me. <laughs> yeah, I do, a little bit. But anyhow, um, you know, Christ is the one, we're in Christ. So obviously he is the image that we're looking for. But what I'm talking about is he, everything that he did redeemed the curse of the law. Everything that he did was to bring us back into a place where we were right standing with God. We were the, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and that we could go to our own, our father. And we didn't have to feel shame that he bore everything that Adam tried to hide himself from from God because he didn't want God to see. So now we're in this place of being perfect in the perfect one. And God, you know, the only perfect offering was his 100% spotless blood, you know? So it's sprinkled on the mercy seat so that we can go and we can meet with him and have mercy and have fellowship with him. So we need to realize what he did allows us to be free. What he did allows us to be able to dance before the Lord without any shame, without any fear of judgment. We've already been judged in Christ. We can be free. God, Yahweh, Yeshua, they want us to feel more comfortable in their presence than we do with anybody else. Amen. They want you to feel more loved by them than anybody else can make you feel. And I know that for a fact. You can be so real. Yeah. You know, there are things that I would never do <laughs> in front of anyone because I would feel like they're going to judge me. And I don't feel like I want to be judged today. <laughs> is be myself 
in front of God. And he has always said, I love you and I want more of you. So continue to be yourself. Continue to be free. Continue to come closer. Continue to enjoy my presence. And that's what he's saying to us today. You are mine. And I love you. You are. He is saying, you are mine. And I love you. Looking at Christine, she's <laughs> <laughs> and we need to get to a place where we can say, and Yahweh and Yeshua, you are mine, you are mine. That's good. We need to be there. Mm -hmm. Do you have something you want to say, Christine? No, I didn't know if you were playing with your mute button. Um, I was tempted and it looks like I did unmute. <laughs> I just, uh, I know I missed like a, a small portion of today. Um, I was on it at the beginning and then I missed a small portion, but okay, I see. Well, I don't know fully, but I see a little bit of why I'm on, but I just love him. Okay. So the whole gold thing, I missed some of what you guys were saying, but literally last night, um, in the spirit, I was like wrapped and adorned with gold, like my whole body. And then he showed me the day before that, someone reminded me, like, the Lord has a treasure chest for me. Like, I'm his treasure chest, but he has one for me, too. Like, he will provide. And also in the spirit, he showed me a room. And he opened the door. <laughs> and it was a bunch of gold and emeralds and diamonds. And it was beautiful. And then I was like, oh, wait, I can enter into this? I can go in. I can explore it more. And so I was like yeah, I want to do that. And so like, he took me into it and it just like, I just felt he kept putting a crown on me last night. And I'm like, I don't know. It's just so good because it's that those, those revelations and those encounters, really those encounters for me personally. Um, it's like he instills the truth that we know as far as head knowledge goes, like he's just instilling it so deeply into me. And I'm so excited and I'm so loved and I love it. <laughs> and also I posted a picture on my Facebook that I like in the moment of the picture, I was having so much fun. I felt so free and like my goofy fun self again. And then I posted it and I was like, Ooh, I don't know. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to keep it up. And then later on, I was like, you know, God, I don't know if I really like that picture. And he was like, well, why not? It's like, because of what people might say or judge me on about it. And which half the stuff we judge ourselves on is not even true. It's not even things that people are actually thinking. And then also it doesn't matter what they're thinking. You know, he told me, he's like, keep the, you're keeping the picture. Like he made me keep it up and I'm I'm gonna keep the photo up if the Lord tells me to it was one I'm responsible for that and two like he knows best so <laughs> I kept it up but what he said was that he, he said I love this photo because I love you and I was like that's enough for me mm -hmm. like that is enough to wipe out all the judgment or the fear of people or embarrassment, like what you said with him being first, but it's like how much he loves us. It's like, it just covers so much. And I'm, I'm very thankful. I'm very, very thankful for what he's showing me lately. <laughs> it's good. That's it's really wonderful. good. Yeah. And, and, you know, 
you have the seer gift and you have many visions. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, that's a blessing. That is a blessing. And that will help you grow quickly, you know? So just receive it. Don't question it. Yeah. You know, and just apply and know that if he is putting a crown on your head, that has to mean that you are royalty, his daughter, right? Mm -hmm. so, so that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to get back to yeah. the, I don't know how. Yeah, sorry. I, I was hoping that it was a little bit related. I know there's a lot of visions and there's more parts to it than I, I even know, but that's like why we come together because we all have different parts. So, okay, yeah. I'm muting. <laughs> so I, I just want to stay in the flow of this because there's a lot here and I have to kind of take it down to a few points today because I don't I don't want it to be a long drawn out teaching because what we do talk about I want it to get inside of you and I and I know that there will be a part two and maybe a part three because this is really really key you know being able to take the word believe it, apply it. And so the one thing that we have to do is we have to dedicate ourselves to this. We have to dedicate ourselves to him and that is knowing him. So I just want to read Philippians 3, 10 through 16 quickly. This is one of my favorite scriptures and it's it, it says, and I continually long to know the wonders of Jesus. And another translation says to know him and to know him more intimately and to experience the overflowing power of his resurrection working in me. I will be one with him in his sufferings and become like him in his death. Only then will I be able to experience complete oneness with him. So it says, only then will I be able to experience complete oneness with him in his resurrection from the realm of death. So it says, I will, I'm going to go back. I will be one with him in his, his sufferings. It says his sufferings and become like him in his death. Only then will I be able to experience complete oneness with him in his resurrection from the realm of death. I admit that I haven't yet a acquired the absolute fullness that I am pursuing. So he's pursuing a fullness. So that means it would be good if we pursued that fullness as well. And it says, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose for which Christ, the purpose for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me as his own. So there's a purpose. And he says, I haven't yet acquired absolute, the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing. So there's a purpose for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me. Wouldn't we want to know what that purpose is? Okay, keep that there. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past, everything that lies behind, 
as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus Christ. So let us who are fully mature have the same passion. And if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires, God will reveal it to them. And let us all advance together to reach the victory prize following one path, one passion. So this is, this is, you know, he told us there's no more milk. You know, the, the little tiger bear or, I mean, cats or whatever, the lion cubs or whatever they were, they were trying to drink. And you can, you can say your vision, Mark. You got it. Oh, okay. So they were trying <laughs> to drink from these bowls and there was a straw and they're like trying to suck up the milk and the milk had gone. It was gone. And there was multiple cups and this cup was running from one cup to the other, one cistern to the other, one platform to the other. That's good. We're not getting, there's no more milk. The milk is done. It's time mm -hmm. for me. See, because you will, you will reach a point where you have to know what what is there? What is this goal? It's not just running here and there and trying and searching and looking and hoping and, you know, give me a word or give me this or give me that. Or it's, that's not what it's all about because that doesn't satisfy for long because most people that do that have to do it again the next day or the next day, and maybe the next day. And sometimes, I mean, I've heard on those broadcasts, people, prophets say, or people giving words say, I've already given you a word. And I, there's no other word to give you. You have to apply that word. The Lord is not giving me another word. So I've heard people say that to other people. And that reminds me of that little tiger cat, whatever it was, a lion that was going, going, going. And finally, someone says, it's dried up. Just apply what he told you last time. And then you'll go to the next place. But we don't like where we are sometimes and we're, we're continuously looking. So today he is saying, there's no more milk here. This is, this is not a place for a lot of milk. Milk is good from time to time, but this is not a place for milk. We're going to maturity. And there, there's an apprehension here. There's a purpose here. Jesus Christ wants us to reach the purpose, the purpose that he died for. That is moving from milk to maturity. Because if I asked you right now, what's the purpose? And we, we might all come up with different answers. I might ask you right now, what is the heavenly call? And you can tell me, what is it? Oh, are you asking me or anyone? Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm, I am just oh. saying that there are people that don't know what it is. So we have to say to ourselves, what is it? And how do we move forward in it? And so there's an invitation, but we have to leave everything that was good or bad in the past. And we have to say, I don't need that anymore. I shake myself. I don't, I don't have to have that anymore. I just want you, 
Only you satisfy. Only you satisfy. That was somebody that gave me a little bit of you. But why take a little bit when you can have the whole thing? No more middleman. Yeah, all you need. He said, you can have all you want. So why do we stop? Why don't we question, how can I have more of you, Lord? Show me how. And so I was, I was looking at a few things. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw some miscellaneous thoughts out, okay? And this was one of my thoughts. It came to my, my head, Hebrews 11. Um, a better resurrection. So I'm thinking to myself, there was a people that were willing to go through a lot of things. And I know this is talking about people in the Old Testament, but they were, they were looking for, there's a fly in here. They were looking for a better resurrection. So let me read this. This is 1135 through 40. Faith-filled women saw their dead children raised in resurrection power. Yet it was faith that enabled others to endure great atrocities. 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 I knew I was saying that incorrectly. <laughs> Wretched out on wheel and they were stretched out on the wheel and tortured and didn't deny their faith in order to be freed because they longed for a more honorable and glorious resurrection. Mm. Others were mocked and experienced the most severe beating with whips. They were in chains and imprisoned. Some of these faith champions were brutally killed by stoning being sawn in two or slaughtered by the sword. They lived in faith as they went about wearing goat skin, skins and sheep skins for clothing. They lost everything they possessed. They endured great afflictions. They were cruelly mistreated. They wandered the earth living in the desert wilderness, in caves, on barren mountains, and in holes in the earth. Truly, the world was not even worthy of them. Pause and think about that. Not realizing who they were, they were the true heroes commended for their faith. Yet they lived in hope without receiving the fullness of what was promised. And what was the fullness of what was promised? Resurrection. What's that? Being resurrected in him. Yeah. He is the fullness of what was promised. Mm -hmm. He is the fullness. So it says receiving the fullness of what was promised. But now God has invited us to live in something better than what they had. And it's faith fullness. He's inviting us to live in faith fullness. This is so that they could be brought to finished perfection along with us so they were looking for a better resurrection and i thought lord can we have a better resurrection what is it i mean i know what resurrection is i know what living in resurrection life is i know that he is the resurrection and he is the life I know that it's all about him, but 
can we as believers have a better resurrection? Not, not outside of him. Hear me. Mm-hmm. And what I heard is glory. 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 When you look up in the sky, we know that some stars are closer than others. So some are brighter than others. And that, in some ways, is a picture of glory. When you move from glory to glory, and I move from glory to glory, do we move together or do we move separately? (laughs) I'm thinking 30, 60, 100 fold is what I'm thinking. It depends on the person. That's it. So I'm all messed up here. So (laughs) okay. What we talked about was 30, 60, and 100 fold. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. But if he's saying that we move from glory to glory in the same image of Christ, and I have that scripture coming up. If I, if I don't make it a focus and you do, do you think that I'm going to ride your coattails? No. So let's wake up today and realize we can have all of him we want. He's not withholding any part of himself, meaning Mm -hmm. you have the right to come to him. He made the way for you to come to him. Directly, not through anybody else. You go to him directly. Every day, every moment. And we live our lives like beggars and like adopted children, which I know there's a scripture that confuses people that makes us think that we, I know we're engrafted in, but that adoption is a placement of a mature son. You are his children. You were his children from day one. He just brought you back to him. Before you were birthed, he carried you in his womb. Absolutely. Before you were formed in your mother's womb. You were in his. Yeah. And I and I told you I had that vision and it helped me. It helped me to understand. You know, I saw the form of Yahweh and I saw him like taking from himself. And as children were born, you know, or when he puts the spirit inside of them, because he is the spirit. And he is the father of spirits. He, in a sense, gave birth to you. You know, he he took a part of himself and he he brought it to the earth into Mike. And he said, that's my son. And he knew today that you would be his son under the blood and that he It's going to do a mighty thing in you. Just that thing that was just prophesied today. Yeah. Can you, he keeps showing me Christine again. Um, I see there's a bright light shining down on top of her head. She's looking around, but then she looks straight up and her dress is strewn out around her, but there's flowers, literal flowers all over her dress, decorating her dress. So that's the second time. That he showed me that. So when he does that, I have to say. Yeah. But he shows me. And that's Christine. Yeah. She might be listening in. 
Um, I know that she sometimes has children that she's um, her children that she's taking care of. But mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, this just thinking about this kind of blows my mind because sometimes as a Christian, we lose direction. We just live every day like it's another day and then we're waiting for another time, another day. You know, it's just like we know his glory is going to be poured out. It could be tonight. It could be 10 years from now. You know, saying, one thing that he keeps reminding me, even right now, is, is what he said is his glory is worth the sacrifice. I have only gotten glimpses, at mere glimpses, but I know it's far greater, far better than what we could ever possibly imagine. It's, it's far, this is God, this is Yeshua, this is I, I will wait, <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, the bottom line is that's in my notes. And, you know, I don't know where in my notes because I have 17 pages that I have to. <laughs> <laughs> but if we don't talk about it today, we're going to talk about it again another time. But um, so we are growing and we're going to, we're hearing the trumpet sound. It's time to go to the high call in Christ Jesus. It's time to mature in Christ. Uh, he purposely lets things dry up so that you move. So that's exactly what that vision was all about. So Romans 8, 29 through 30, just going to read this quickly. For he knew all us before we were born. And he destined us from the beginning to share the likeness of his son. This means the son is the oldest among a vast family of brothers and sisters who will become just like him. Having determined our destiny ahead of time, he called us to himself and transferred his perfect righteousness to everyone called. And those who possess his perfect righteousness, he co-glorified with his son. So he called us from the beginning to share in the likeness of his son, Yeshua. And that we, we are to become just like him. So what is this all about? What is the likeness? So it says, this is, we are to share in his likeness. So I looked up likeness. Likeness means um, icon. So it's, it's E-I-K-O-N. It's a likeness. It's a stature. It's a profile. It's a representation. It's a resemblance. It's image. So what does likeness mean? So if I look at it, it says the image, a reproduction, a counterpart, a present reference, uh, excuse me, representation, a picture or image, especially a portrait, the state or fact of being like, the semblance or appearance of something. So as you said, Mark, on a previous broadcast, maybe two, you said, if you wanted to know what, okay, let's just say a counterfeit $20 bill looks like, you would look at the true $20 bill. You would look at a real $20 bill yeah, you study okay. the genuine. You study the genuine. That's it. So what are we going to do? We're going to study the genuine. We're going to study Yeshua. 
We're going to study him. It's his likeness and it's his image that we are called to be just like. I know that this does, we have personalities. I'm not saying where personalities are going to change, but you are a facet of his image. I am a facet of his image. And he just wants his image, his glory. And I'll go over what glory means at some point as best as I can, because that's a tough one. <laughs> There's a lot to it. And so, you know, he just wants us to be like the original in his image and likeness. So Jesus is our example. So if I just take another look at, say, 1 Peter 2, 21 through 24, it says he's our example. It just, I won't read the whole thing. It does say, leaving his example for you to follow. So Christ suffered. Christ lived his life. He even suffered in our place. He's, he left the example for us to follow. We know that. If we look at Philippians 2, 5 through 11, it says, and consider the example of Jesus, the anointed one, has set before us, he has been set before us, let his mindset become our motivation. He existed in the form of God, yet he gave no thought to seizing equality with God as his supreme prize. So he, he existed in the form of God. He was God. He was in the form of God. But he gave no thought to coming to earth and being God to us. I mean, he was, but he came as a man, came in the form of a man. He emptied himself of his outward glory by reducing himself to the form of a lowly servant. He became a man. He humbled himself and became vulnerable one of those words, choosing to be revealed as a man and was obedient. And that is called the humiliation of Christ. You know, it's just the opposite. His example is just the opposite of what Lucifer would do. Just the opposite. Of who will? Lucifer. Oh, yeah. You know, he was God. Jesus was God. He was the word. He was the word made flesh. He was God the son. He, a body was prepared for him. He never had a beginning. I mean, he, he was there with God. He was God. He was in God. He was the word of God. And he was the very logos of God. And his example was to empty himself and come as a man. You know, I was looking at something um, that's probably on my phone. But if you look at that example, and you take a look at the five I, I wills of Satan. And it would, number one is, I will ascend into heaven. I will, I will ascend. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation. He wanted to be idolized. Mm -hmm. And that's what we know is coming down because there are idols in the church. 
and it's the work of Satan. So I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and I will be like the most high. And that is pride. So pride comes before a fall. Pride comes before destruction. But that wasn't Yeshua. He did just the opposite. He humbled himself. He came in the form of a man. He was a perfect example, even in his death, a criminal's death by crucifixion. Because of that obedience, God exalted him and multiplied his greatness. He has now been given the greatest of all names. The authority of the name of Jesus causes every knee to bow in reverence. Every and everyone will one day submit to his name in the heavenly realm, in the earthly realm, and in the demonic realm. And every tongue will proclaim in every language, Jesus Christ is Lord Yahweh, bringing glory and honor, excuse me, to God, his Father, and our Father. So in Philippians 3.14, it says, I press on towards the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I press on. In it's pressing on, it's running. It's running a race. In the Passion Translation, it says, I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus Christ. So we're pressing on into this. We're actually running. We're running the race. We are called to run this race. We're called to to do this. This is an upward call. This is a heavenly call. This is what he desires for us. Hear the call. Don't let anything stop you from that one desire. If he's first place in our life, like he said, I'm supposed to be first, then we, we want to make sure that what he wills what he desires is our desire. And he's calling us to, with a heavenly calling, to run this race, to press on to the high call in Christ Jesus. And we know that it's going to take, it's going to take obedience. It's going to take an attitude that says, this is what I want. It's going to take your desire. It's going to take your mind off of things that bring distractions. The little foxes that he wants us to get rid of. It's going to take a mind, a mind, a will, emotions, and all your strength to love him, to put him first, and to walk in and actually run into that goal of the high call in him. It's going to take endurance. It's going to take running a race to the very end. It's going to take pressing through resistance. It's going to take keeping your eyes on the horizon when things around you are calling for your attention. And a healthy diet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Christians love coffee. <laughs> I love coffee. Not as much as them, but. 
<laughs> I know. And it will take a healthy diet. You're right. Thank you. I mean, that. spiritually, I not, not just physically, but. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely both. To run, you need a healthy diet. Oh, and, yeah. Um, so I, I don't want to go too far on this because I just want you to think about this because I think that I've said a lot already. And um, I just want to say 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. Isn't it obvious that all runners on the racetrack keep on running to win, but only one receives the victor's prize? Yet each one of you must run the race to be victorious. You have to get in the race. And you have to pace yourself too. A true athlete, excuse me, athlete will be disciplined in every respect, practicing constant self-control in order to, to win the laurel wreath, excuse me, the laurel wreath that quickly withers. But we run our race to win a victor's crown that will last forever. For that reason, I don't just for the exercise, I don't run just for the exercise or box like one throwing aimless punches, but I train, I train like a champion athlete. I subdue my body and I get it under control so that after preaching the good news to others, I won't be disqualified. So that takes determination. It takes planning. It takes um, whatever you have to do in your life. You know, sometimes it takes time management. I mean, <laughs> these are just basic things that you know, I, I took a class once and it was a mentor class. It was last year and it only lasted for like four weeks. And out of the four weeks, this very anointed person had one day on time management. Now, this was a Christian. Was I a little surprised to hear about that? But what ended up happening is it was explained that managing your time, especially when the Lord is preparing you for the next stage of ministry or just basically what you have set in your heart. If you've set in your heart, I'm going to the high call I'm moving from glory to glory, not because I'm ambitious, not because I'm competitive, but because I love him and I want what he wants. And if I can have a better resurrection or if I can walk in the most glory that's available for me to walk in, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it because I want all of him. And I want all of him in this life, but throughout eternity. I'm planning for my eternity because I've already said, I want to be with you, Jesus, as close as possible. I want to be able to see you. I want to know what you're doing. I want to be as close as possible. And I know Yahweh picks the people that are, I know he, he does. <laughs> so, but it has to be in your heart to want to be there or else you will just walk aimlessly and not have a goal. My goal is him throughout eternity. My goal is not anything less. And I've said this over and over again. 
And I've told him over and over again, I don't care about a mansion. I don't care about any of those things. I don't care about a mansion, mansion on a mountain. I don't care about a mansion on the water. I don't care about a mansion. In, in many ways, I'm a mansion that he's building. You're a mansion he's building. Are there mansions in heaven? People say there are. But what I'm saying is I would rather spend eternity in his presence, in his, the closest I can get, because I am a person who knows what he's done for me. Mm -hmm. You know, like Mary, it said that, you know, she washed his feet. We know that. We know that she was at his feet. She washed his feet with her tears. She broke open the alabaster box. She washed his feet. She put oil on his feet. She prepared him for his burial. And it was said of her that it was said that someone that knows that they're forgiven, and I'm not wording this correctly, I'm paraphrasing, he who or she who is forgiven much loves much. And I wasn't a murderer. I'm just saying, I'm not measuring sin, but I know who I was in Adam. I know who I was. And this life is so much better than it ever was before. I, I can't mm -hmm. even compare the two. I could never go back. I could never go back either. You know, to whom much is, you're right, when you said that, um, who has been? I, I know how you're saying it, but what I saw when you said that is those like you and me and others like us have that deeper understanding of true forgiveness. Those that don't have that deeper understanding of forgiveness, they treat it lightly. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. To whom yeah. to whom little is forgiven than to whom much is forgiven. It was that deeper revelation and that the and walking that, in it. Yeah. Faith and, puts into action what love has done. And he is love. Yeah. And so in what I've moved into from what he did to did for me at the cross, just the basic level of salvation and how I've grown in him. And I'm saying that we can all grow in him. I'm not measuring who's grown where, I mean, who's mature and who is, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying where I am right now, I would gladly worship him with all of my heart and all of my passion and all of my strength throughout eternity. Because that's how grateful I am. That's how grateful. This is what he does for us. He brings us to this place that we never even dreamed was possible to live in. Every, or even existed. Yeah. You move from glory to glory and you realize, I mean, you know, you realize when you reach a new level of glory, you know, you realize it's not the same anymore. I think differently. I see things differently. I'm at a greater level of peace. I'm at a level of peace that can't be shaken. And it all comes from him. It all comes from his presence. Relationship. It all comes from relationship. It all comes from what he did on the cross, the finished work of the cross. 
It comes from his resurrection. It comes from his word. It's all about him. And if we leave here with one thing today, and that is, I need to know him more. There's something that he's waiting to reveal in me that I haven't experienced yet. Just think about it. If you know that you've moved to a level of glory, there's more glory. You haven't reached the, <laughs> the, the top of the summit. You know, there's more. And then there's more on top of that. And then there's all eternity to discover that. (laughs) But it's more, it's one wow on top of another wow. (laughs) Wow. On top of another wow. On top of another wow. You know, the world would think you are, you've lost your marbles. But I can tell you, I wouldn't go back to thinking like the world. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go back to that misery for anything. So you kind of led me into a place where I I think that we're going to stop. And I I don't want to stop without giving you much, but plan for your eternity. Plan, plan, not just, like I said, not just because you feel like I've got to have a great eternity. You know, I'm like, you know, I will, I will, I will. No, that's not how it works. And that's not what I'm saying because that's not the image of Christ. You know, he humbled himself. And what this is, is I love you more. I love you more. If you feel like I need to love him more, let's just pray about it. Let's pray about it. I, you know, you were talking about forgiveness and I know that I had something here. Forgiveness for me, if I can just interrupt you or interject, I had a hard time with forgiveness as a child growing up because of what I had, because it doesn't doesn't matter. But then again, it does because I learned so much. What he has showed me about forgiveness is that I can forgive that person easier now because I understand the spirit behind the person that motivates them. When you understand the people of the world are controlled by the ruler of this world, that they're not in their right mind. Even Christians are do the same thing. It's easier for me to forgive now, knowing that what they're doing, it's not truly who they are or it's the spirit that's motivating that person. Yeah. Which helped me greatly because I forgive. And I'm still working on my road, driving in city traffic. But trust me, what I'm saying is it's easier for me with that understanding that he has showed me to forgive even things that have happened recently. Like it's, I forgive them. I pray for them because yeah. it's not them. It's that spirit. <laughs> Behind. And you know that you were forgiven much. Huh? You know that you were forgiven much. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Know that I was forgiven much. Yeah. So he humbled himself. And sometimes we have to humble ourselves and just forgive because yeah. he forgave. And we know that forgiveness is something that causes, and I'm not saying you, 
I'm not, I'm not pointing. I'm just saying oh, un- you're fine. unforgiveness, you know, just like you were saying earlier that someone said basically that they're mad at him because he's, he didn't do it the way he, that that person wants it done. He's not doing it the way that person wants it done when that person wants it done just a little ticked off, you know? And what that does is it shows that that person really doesn't know him. Well, it's like the the clay pot telling the potter, you know, how to fix me. Like, no, the creation doesn't tell the creator what to do. But I know when, when I haven't, understood something I learned that I don't speak that junk out of my mouth it's you're digging a hole and you're opening the door to bitter, bitterness and all of that is not good for your health it actually keeps you unhealthy mm-hmm. and so But what I've learned is if there's something I don't understand, I don't always even take it to anybody else. Take it to him. I I mean, he knows. I take it to him. And believe me, I've spent nights crying over things that I didn't understand. Weeping may endure for a night, but what comes in the morning? Joy. Joy. And the morning it of a new day. That way. It always worked that way. I could spend almost every hour saying, I want you more. I don't understand this. This thing really bothers me, but I, I love you more. If you didn't answer my prayer, if you didn't answer my request, if you didn't show me, I still love you more. I love you more. You know, I know who you are. I know who you are. And if you're withholding something from me that I think you might be withholding something from me, I still love you more. I still love you more. And he always answers that prayer. You know, he told me literally, um, if I never answer your prayers, will you still love me? And of course, I started crying. I said, yes, Lord. I, this is way before a series of events happened. And then a, a, a pivotal moment happened in my life where I was blindsided. The rug was pulled out from under my feet. My whole world, as I knew it, turned upside down. And I've gone, I went through it, but looking back, I was praying and kept praying, Lord, Lord, you know, bring, bring this back to the way it was. What I'm getting at is he did not answer my prayers because there was a greater plan in place. There was a greater purpose mm-hmm. for me and him and him and me, a greater place of growing and maturity so when you're going through things and things are all crazy and your whole life turns upside down and you're praying lord bring this back to the way it used to be you know whatever it may be for me it was a divorce bring my wife back you said that you know the two shall become one and on and on and on i am so thankful i am so thankful because he has and had and has a greater plan and purpose so if he doesn't answer your prayers trust him anyways keep moving he has something far greater for you that you will not you just will not regret i have no regrets about the past i have no regrets about anything what he has for me and us all of us not just a select few, all of us is far greater than what we could ever fathom 
what we could ever imagine. And sometimes he, um, and I'm not talking about things that he died for. I'm not talking about um, healing and, you know, I, you know, I'm just kind of putting that to the side. But sometimes yeah. he doesn't answer your prayer because he wants you, like one time I learned that he didn't want to answer that prayer, but he wanted me to pray differently. He wanted me to see it differently. And that, oh, yeah, yeah. that was when I went into the courtrooms of heaven, right? Yeah. Because he said, I can't, he's basically saying, I can't answer it this way. You have to do it, you know, his way, because his way is set, but I didn't understand his way. So once I understood his way, I did it the way he could answer it. So I had to learn that. So I was learning his ways. I was getting to know him in a new way that I, I didn't know before that. Then, then there are times that I just, you know, I wanted something really good that he <laughs> gives. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, mom. <laughs> You know, I want this and I would just say, why not? What is it? What is but I always know that there's something that he doesn't give me because he wants to answer that in a different way that is so much better than what I think I need at that moment. There's always a reason. There's always perfect order. Mm. You know, and there are times I, I might not understand it, but he does. And I just have to trust. Just trust. So does anybody have anything else they want to say? We're going to, we're going to let you go in just a little while. Anything else? Do you have anything? Anyone? Is Mike I still there? Yeah, he's still here. Oh, there he is. Oh, I got, I'm got. i on a different screen. Now I can see him. <laughs> it changed you. <laughs> Do you have anything, Mike? You're so quiet tonight. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> no. Oh, yeah, no. Um, that, no. I, Pam, you unpacked it all, eh? You guys unpacked it all. It's, There's um, still more to unpack. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> It's so much. It is so deep, but it's also very uh, thought-provoking, yeah. you know. And God's working in each and every one of our hearts. Um, yeah, I know you, you. You said there was just some beautiful nuggets uh, about um, trusting, about for, um, gratefulness, about Him loving Him more. Just all these wonderful nuggets. Uh, so um, yeah. So we're looking forward to the, what was this part? What part one or part two? This is part one. Okay. <laughs> we'll see what he wants to do. Sometimes he changes, you know, yeah. what I think the direction we're going in. I didn't, I had like 17 pages and I skipped through. But wow. the key is that today, no one that hears this broadcast should leave in the limited way of thinking that we had before the broadcast if we had a limited way of thinking wow, you know, wow, yeah. we need to move into what he's calling us to he's drawing us and he's calling us to walk in the high call this is a place of maturity and if we can talk about this and we can help anyone, anyone, ourselves included. You know, as we talk about it, we grow in it. You know, we let can me just interject here for a sec because 
that has been, you, you and I have talked about this. We've talked about it on this broadcast before recently, I believe. But yesterday and today on, on, our, on my walks, on, on my walk with him, I was all, I'm reminded again of our names being written in the palm of his hands and our walls are continually before him. Our walls is translated into our limitations, our limits are continuously before him on the cross in the death and the burial it was done away with in the resurrection we have no more limits it's it's we limit ourselves in our own thinking but we're not limited anymore mm -hmm. we we are he has told me to his mind is limitless ours is limited think with his mind not ours we have the mind of Christ. We don't have the, the old man mind anymore. The limits have been taken off. Right. Right. So. So that's the stretching yeah, part of it. That is the stretching. And what I'm talking about is available and has been available for, for everyone to walk in. Even when Paul, the apostle Paul was teaching on it, he said, I haven't attained to it. But there are going to be a people, if there hasn't already been a person here and a person there or whoever. And it's not, it's not, we we think that the person that attained is the one that did a lot of, you know, miracles and signs and wonders. And it's not that that doesn't happen through people that have attained. But it can happen through someone that hasn't reached. Because I'm sure the Apostle Paul performed many miracles, many signs and wonders. I'm sure that the Lord through him um, obviously moved in the gifts of the Spirit, but also did healings and deliverances. We know that. We know he, we have saw that he did deliverances. You know, we can see that as we read the Bible. But he said, I haven't attained. To what I'm talking about. So it's not the power gifts that make it happen. It's not that that's not part of it, but it's not that. And we've put our focus in places that have been full of limitation, limitation. Mm -hmm. When he said, what I have for you is limitless and you just keep moving from glory to glory, but you have to be the one that decides to move. And part of the moving is just being in his presence. Part of the moving is just spending time with him. Letting go of the old. Pressing on, letting go of the old. Part of the whole picture is having fellowship with him and reading his word and letting him speak to you and then actually letting that thing become life in you live it out believe it so much that you live it so you know I just, I thank you, Lord, for what you've, what you've done today. I am just blown away by your presence and your love. I could just spend all day and all night in your presence. That would be a gift to us, Lord. That's what we want. I'm sorry, I'm getting carried away. But the bottom line is, we thank you for showing us that there's a place that we can go to, that you're actually calling us to walk in, to actually run in. You're saying that you want us to, to run towards the goal of the high call in you. And you're showing us little by little what that looks like. Some of us have a larger picture of it. Some of us have a smaller picture of it. 
But Lord, we determine today, and I'm going to speak for everyone that wants me to, that we will walk and run, actually not walk, but run in the high call. Your call. We see it. We hear it. And we we will go directly into your perfect will. And that's a place of maturity. And that's a place of living and moving and breathing in you and you and us. It's a place of being in your perfect likeness and image. It's a place of glory. It's a place of beauty. So Lord, I just ask you to forgive us of what was whatever it was, not managing our time or not focusing correctly or putting something before you. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, to remind us in this very sensitive time of receiving this word, remind us to shake ourselves and get back on the track to run the race and win the prize that you have called us to win. And we thank you and we praise you. We love you. We exalt you. And again, we thank you for what you're doing. And we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So thank you, everybody. I hope you have a good night, Mike. Oh, yeah. Amen. Thank you. Wonderful. Love you, Mike. Love you guys. Eh? All right. Love you, too. We will see you soon. Hope you have a good night. God bless. God bless. Yeah. Pam. God bless. Yeah. Have a lovely week. Thank you. You, too. What's that? What's that? Don't hang up after you shut down. Okay. So I am... So... I'm going to shut down. Okay, Mike is gone, but I need to end the meeting for all or leave the meeting. Can I um can I connect right back with you? Sure, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to end the meeting.